But I'm going to start a new movement. It's called the anti faggot movement. Okay? anti butthurt movement. The anti butt fucking movement. But the real patriotic American, American movement. If anybody from the left is watching right now, <laughs> uh, anybody on the left is watching right now, y'all can suck it. You want to fuck a dude? Go ahead. Don't ever try to get me to respect that bullshit. I'm going to rock my MAGA hat everywhere. Somebody want to rip it off my head? You're getting your teeth knocked out. We, we have people talking about family rights. That's a huge thing that people have been talking to me about. The destruction of the family unit. That, that's a heterosexual value. People, you know, media asks us all the time, how are we oppressed? It's not that individuals are, are being oppressed for being straight. It's that traditional family values are being systematically eroded in this country. From the very beginning of this, there's there's been a real core group that is, you know, gone from being Boston free speech to being resist Marxism to being 10 other random things that lasted a day before they became uh, Super Happy Fun America. Mark, you know, he was the leader of RM. Now he's gone to Super Fun America. He was kind of like our John Lennon of the group. We were like a Beatles-like situation. Samson Rachapi, um, Mark Sahadi, uh, John Medlar. But it was just like an RM like rebrand. It was a split off. Well, because it, RM, it's hard to deny RM that. imploded because they were Nazis in it. One of the things that people don't know out there is just how many of these groups actually exist. I think the number is honestly smaller than we believe because they all keep renaming themselves every time they start to get doxxed. You know what? I'll tell you one who was not an absolute Nazi, who was a great American that gets slandered all the time, and he's, he's a great man, and I love him to this day, and there's nothing Nazi about him, and there's nothing white supremacist about him. He's a great American. John Camden. John Camden, that's a name a lot of people, especially in the New England area, are going to know from these types of events. He is an interesting case for me because I do believe he is still very problematic. There is video footage of me interviewing him about his Nazi and uh, KKK tattoos. So Samson's on here and he's saying Mike's friends with them, he ain't going to give you names. Oof. Because I was friends with them, I would have been with them. That's true. At your parade, because they were definitely at your parade guy. Straight Nazi tattoos and everything, so. He also has a tattoo on his body of an actual person wearing a KKK hood. Um, that doesn't come out too often because it's covered by clothing. Uh, and then he has multiple tattoos on his belly that were for achievements uh, while being a white nationalist. Uh, those achievements are never good things. Those aren't achievements for handing a bereaved mother some flowers. They're more for beating down someone of another race. A first of its kind parade may be making its way to Boston this summer. The organization, Super Happy Fun America, made up of three guys, is trying to hold a straight pride parade in Boston because they claim straight people are an oppressed majority. How, how did we get to where we are today? Sure. Um, the, the Straight Pride Parade, you know, everybody has talked or joked about having one of these uh, nearly every year. Somebody brings up, oh, oh, maybe we should have a Straight Pride Parade. And this time around... Your group of friends? or My group of friends? I've, I mean, I've heard, I see it on social media, things like that. Um, and somebody, John, John Hugo, the president of our group, and our vice president, uh, Mark Sahady, he's an Army veteran, captain uh, in the Army, deployed overseas. They said, well, geez, maybe we can create one of these actual straight pride parades and try to fight back against this agenda that's been pushed uh, against us. Milo, who's gay, is the head of the straight pride parade. He's going to be our grand marshal. We just thought it'd be a lot of fun to have Are him. Are you he sure you want to associate yourself with Milo? How, to what extent is this a sincere attempt to bring heterosexuals who may be feeling under the cosh of left-wing culture? And to what extent is it just a really funny troll that's got a bit out of hand? Well, well one of the things we want, Jesse, is them to add S to LGBTQ for straight. It's more inclusive that way. <laughs> 
Are you just doing this as a joke to be provocative, or do you really oh, feel this no, strongly? No, 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 this? no. We, we think we think this is great. We have we, we knew we were going to trigger the left, and that's why we called it Super Happy Fun America. On its surface, it seemed harmless. John Hugo was a buffoon, admittedly trolling the left. And though his group was promoting a straight pride parade, the core group of Boston organizers got their start in 2017 with the Boston Free Speech Rally, shortly after Donald Trump's inauguration. John Medlar, then a 22-year-old gamer and self-described shitlord, was their first spokesperson. Among the speakers at their first rally was Kyle Chapman, a thrice convicted felon who spent 10 years in jail for armed robbery, among other things. He is the leader of the Fraternal Order of the Alt Knights, a branch of the Proud Boys, and got his nickname Based Stickman for attacking students with a stick during the protests in Berkeley, California. Other fringe characters who spoke were Salvatore Cipolla, an anti-gay Proud Boy, and Augustus Invictus, a Holocaust denier and fringe politician who called for violently overthrowing the U.S. government, which received loud applause. We have to stand up to this. We are being systematically oppressed. The second battle of Berkeley, I broke my hand, knocking out an Antifa punk. I implore everybody to get out there, organize these rallies, organize these events, stand up to the tyranny, stand up to the systemized political oppression uh, that is being exercised against uh, people of conservative thought. I believe these people have targeted whites specifically. The very progenitors of the Western civilization are white people, and we have been targeted for destruction. If Antifa is showing up, can they show up masked? They show up with weapons. The reason why they're masked and all dressed in black is because it makes it harder to identify <coughs> while committing acts of violence against us. Violence is a component of that. Any means. Doesn't matter what it is, violence, murder. At this point, everybody is ready for revolution. I don't mean revolution in the Bernie Sanders type. I don't mean revolution of some brand new marketing scheme. I don't mean there's going to be a ballot box revolution that's going to be peaceful. I mean literal revolution. These fuckers on the hill want revolution because they are communists. If six million people die because the Germans are evil people, do I believe that six million people were killed by evil Hitler? That's what you're asking me? Sure. If you wanted to define it that way. Okay, then I'm still waiting to see those facts. What's up, faggots? <laughs> Can I get a fucking proud air boy? Proud air boy! Alright, now, gentlemen, all right, and ladies, and non binary gender queers yeah! that are attending. Yeah! Yeah! Alright. There's a group out here that I'm a member of. It's called the Proud Boys. And, uh, any of the Proud Boys here, I want them to repeat after me. I'm a Western chauvinist. I'm a Western chauvinist. And I refuse to apologize. I refuse to apologize. For creating the modern world. For creating the modern world. What is this group? Are we pedophiles? For their next event, Boston Free Speech landed a big name when Proud Boys founder Gavin McInnes signed aboard. For the uninitiated, he is a right-wing talk show host and creator of the infamous 10 Things I Hate About the Jews video. And I'd like to tell you 10 things I hate about the Jews. This is kind of a long one, but there's this overall sort of whiny, paranoid fear of Nazis that is making them scared of Christians and Trump, who are their greatest allies. It's like a black guy going, yeah, white people did slavery. First degree, you declare yourself a proud boy. Second degree, we beat the shit out of you until you can name five breakfast cereals, and you have to give up <laughs> masturbating. And then third degree... You still have to give up masturbating, but you have to get a tattoo. And then fourth degree, you get arrested or in a serious violent fight for the cause. Really? Yes. You get arrested in a serious violent fight, so you're promoting or violence? Or some sort of major altercation. You shouldn't that, you should erase that part. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's uh, my uh, Jew uh, finger thing.
Oh, well, uh, you know... Just uh, kidding. We're not anti-Semites here. One week before the event was to take place, Heather Heyer was murdered by one of the right-wing extremists in Charlottesville. Among them was Augustus Invictus. This represents a turning point for the people of this country. We are determined to take our country back. We're going to fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. That's what we believed in. That's why we voted for Donald Trump, because he said he's going to take our country back. And that's what we got to do. Heather Heyer is dead. She was plowed down by Alex Fields Jr. at Charlotte's Unite the Right rally. This rally, when I first heard of it back in May and June, was all about we don't want to we want to oppose taking down statues. They want to take down the Robert E. Lee statue. Jews will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. Jews yes. are fucking with you on a daily basis. Jews are taking back comedy awards. Jews are telling you that it's illegal to look at emails. It's not about the Confederate flag. No one's ever cared about South Carolina before. What they really want is white guilt. Who is to blame for this crash? Who is to blame for Charlottesville? Who's to blame for this death? You had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Trump's alleged condemnation was, of course, nonsense, since he had promoted violence for months on the campaign trail and into his presidency. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims. You can be you can feel that your life or your safety is in danger and then react in self-defense. There does not have to be a physical confrontation, right? Knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. I wanted to hit a couple of those speakers. Please don't be too nice. Next time we see him, we might have to kill him. McInnes was savvy, so after Charlottesville, he bailed on Boston free speech. The rest of the group, without fame of their own, decided to move forward with Samson Rachapi, Cal Chapman, and outspoken homophobe Joe Biggs. I sat down with spokesperson John Medlar and read before the rally. Kyle Chapman, base dick man, was yeah. going to come, right? Gavin McInnes, who's from the Proud Boys. Kyle Chapman got... has, by the way, uh, recommitted. How about McInnes? McInnes is still out. He's still out? He still but... thinks this is all a trap. What, what is your uh, your political ideology? What uh, Because maybe people don't know about that. Government is not society. We, the people, are society, so we need to take it upon ourselves to take uh, more individual responsibility for ourselves and for each other, rather than sort of like push those responsibilities off onto government bureaucrats that are less efficient at everything. But when you're talking about responsibility, you're bringing Augustus Invictus, who's a Holocaust denier and finished off one of his most recent speeches by saying, hail death. He's talking about active uh, you know, re revolution. Uh, I heard you in the previous interview with Al Jazeera saying that he's not a credible threat. However, people out there who are espousing this kind of ideology uh, may have some influence on what happened in Charlottesville. Does that seem responsible? I think that there is a, uh, I think that there, uh, in my own interactions with Augustus Invictus, I listen to a lot of people. I listen to, I, I do listen to neo-Nazis, and I do listen to the far left as well, and it, I find all the different, I've listened to everything in between. I listen to everything in between, and I find the minute differences between all these ideologies. When I, I heard you speak. What I want to say, what, the reason that I bring that up is, is because uh, when I listen to, um, uh, say, someone like Richard Spencer, and I listen to someone like Augustus Invictus, I do see a, uh, a subtle, but well, at least what might other people might see as subtle, but I do see a, a, uh, what I think are important differences between them. Sounds very enlightenment, kind of 
I, I'm tempted to say a uh, faggy, to be honest. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right. Monica Cannon is an organizer for this Saturday's Fight Supremacy Rally. The event Facebook page shows over 8,000 marchers okay. committed. We're not just going to sit down. Yeah. We're going to stand up. We're going to resist. We're going to be a united front, and you're going to hear us. What were you hoping to tell the crowd today? I wanted to get on stage and call out the KKK and call out the Nazis and call out all the other hate groups by name and ridicule them publicly from the stage. Why was it important for you to do that? Because in a way, just by being there, you're sort of in a way uh, in the view perhaps of other people who would be seeing you deliver this speech, which apparently you're now not going to get to deliver. In a way, you'd be equated with those very people that you're denouncing. All I want to be do is I want to be judged for the content of my speech and the things I have to say. And I wanted to get on with all this divisiveness that's happening in the, on social media and in the news. We're not getting a message of peace. We're getting a message of divide. And I wanted to bring that message of peace and try to calm down all these tensions that we're seeing in this country. Samson Rachapi spoke publicly of peace and unity. Privately, he wrote on Facebook, if we unleashed violence, the runoff from the rain would have been red from all the commie blood. Ultimately, an estimated 45,000 people showed up to protest Boston Free Speech, who got escorted out in a police truck at the end of the event. Samson Rachapi and the other participants were upset and acted surprised that they were labeled bigots and Nazis, despite the fact that they were organizing events jam-packed with bigots, white nationalists, and Holocaust deniers calling for violent revolution. How do you think it turned out? Well, it wasn't the rally that we had envisioned, but um, I think it essentially made our point. Was it premature to, to judge folks without hearing them uh, Saturday and, and uh, shutting them out, essentially? So, no, um, I'm going to be candid and say that if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, Aflac. Um, most of the speakers that actually all of the speakers that were on their program, um, one of them, Kyle Chapman, the moment you Google his name, it says white nationalist. I'm not a Nazi. I, I, I sh shouldn't have to say that, but I will. I've come across Gavin McInnes here and there. I'm like, he's certainly not a Nazi. You know, you could, you might no. call him controversial. You might not agree with what he has to say. He's certainly not a Nazi. There are other people calling the group a white supremacy group. You're... It's terrible. Okay, let's talk about it. Well, um, I, I'm an activist. Uh, you may have heard about the free speech movement that's been happening in this country for the past couple of years. Um, I was involved with that big one that happened on the Boston Common in August 2017, a week after Charlottesville. The free and speech rally? The free speech rally. Okay. And I, I, like everybody else, was watching the free speech movement play out on TV. And the way the media was presenting it was you have these white supremacists and Nazis holding these free speech rallies, and you have these anti-fascists coming out and shutting them down. And every single time this happens, there's violence, there's property destruction, and as an observer from home, I want nothing to do with either one of those sides. The problem with Rachapi's sides narrative is if we are to accept this, then his side has killed. After the mountains of negative press, Boston Free Speech began to brand themselves as resist Marxism. The Rally for the Republic is a patriotic themed rally. It is being sponsored by Resist Marxism, Boston Free Speech, and several other patriotic organizations. Hello, I'm John Medler with Resist, with Resist Marxism and Boston Free Speech. Those accusing us of spreading hate do so because they want us to hate each other. They accuse us of spreading fear because they want us to be afraid of each other. No one of sound mind and judgment can possibly listen to what we have consistently said and conclude that we are Nazis. The accusation that we give a platform to hate is equally baseless. Once again, I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, change your thinking right now. I don't know why you're so afraid of communism, that you have to have a big parade about it. So you know I'm full of square against the right-wing radical agenda. You know, it's providing full-on cover for a bunch of unsavory scumbags. You know that, I know that. You control, you're welcome to troll, and it's trolling the normies, but you're also giving cover to a lot of fucking scumbags. All the usual suspects were there. Sampson, Mark, Brandon, Medlar, Stickman, Toisi, a guy in blackface, and a new guy, Jovi Val, the guy with the thick glasses and the MAGA hat. 
After things wound down at the bandstand, the group headed up to the state house where Jovi gave an anti-LGBTQ speech to much enthusiasm by the crowd. And I'm telling you right now, they will be set free. Right now, they're being lied to. All right? I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what gender you are. Which two of them, of course. And remember, guys, I love all genders, okay? Both of them are great, and they can live in harmony. All right? And don't be pretenders. There's only two genders. Mark Sahadi bragged that they had cost the city hundreds of thousands of dollars, while Stickman and Jovi ranted about a holy crusade. We only cost the city like $300,000 this afternoon. We figured we need to cost some more today. Exactly. Maybe we can spend another 100000 200000 tonight yeah. on security. Carl yeah. Marx is, is a demon-worshipping fucking Satanist. Right? Is this is literally... You guys are literally on the side of God. Yeah. We are literally. This is a crusade. Deus Vort! 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 in Latin means God wills it. It is also an alt right meme like this one. This is a crusade. We're fighting against evil. And we're going to keep doing it. People are going to attack us, people are going to slice us open, people are going to shoot us, people are going to stab us, break bones, but guess what? The idea about this is, no matter what they do to us, we'll know who you are once you get right back up. But this is a Judeo-Christian nation, and the oldest value is dear to us, right? Jovi is also well known for his actual Nazi paraphernalia and anti-Semitism. That's Jack Corbin. Yeah. Who is it? Jack Corbin. Yeah. I don't know who Jack Corbin is. Really? Yeah. He goes to restaurants and draws swastikas on his pancakes with ketchup. That's freedom of expression. They say Trump is a white supremacist, so to just shut that down in a way, I just put Trump is a Jew. Jews are also not white. Yes, August, you outnumbered us a thousand to one! You think that you can deter us with this? Even when you outnumber us ten to one! If you want a war, let it begin here. You will lose. You will lose. The strange thing about, uh, you know, the Providence event and Samson is that at one in Providence, he had been hit in the head uh, by a bike lock. Take your mask off. Hey, look out! Get out of here! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up. And that event really changed him. Um, he went from someone who I looked at who wanted to have the conversation and was trying to distance himself a little from the fighters on his side, from the people who only showed up to brawl and wanted a discourse. Then he gets hit in the head by a bike lock, and now suddenly he's reinviting the Proud Boys, Patriots Front, Patriots Prayer out, who he knows are just there to fight. Shortly after yet another contentious rally, Straight Pride's Samson Rachapi hosted an event in which he passed out thumb drives containing documents such as instructions for an armed uprising, instructions for an insurrection, expedient homemade firearms, volumes one and two, the anarchist cookbook, and the blaster's handbook. In light of the uh, whole controversy over the 3D blueprints of firearms, like how to print your own firearms at home, we ordered 40 thumb drives, and I downloaded a whole bunch of different files from the web. And we're going to go out tomorrow at the state house and hand them out to the public and maybe even some representatives who are hanging around in their offices. And these thumb drives are going to have all sorts of cool stuff on them, including those 3D blueprints. And then all those who thought they were enemies will be turned to friends. <laughs> Let those who formerly hated learn the redeeming power of love. Unhiram, should take off their face masks so we can see them. Stay together in this group. Allow us to do our job to protect you guys and get you out there. All right? 
So we need you guys in a small, compact group. Ten guys. So get your group together so we can walk you in. One more helper. Hey, somebody come out with the generator. They somehow don't believe us and think we're some secret front group. They're attacking my brother. Don't give a fuck. They just took it. They just took his fucking ass. Now get the fuck out of the way. Get the fuck out of the way. Get the fuck out of the way. They get the fuck out of the way. Stop standing in front of me. Stop standing in front of me. They're attacking my brother. They're attacking my brother. We don't. What are you got, motherfucker? Then I don't give a fuck. See? Get the fuck out of the way. Fuck this shit! Sam, no, 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 Hey, Joey. 
Joey, I, I got a question. Sure. Uh, on the video the other day, you said that uh, American Guard was a flat out uh, a flat out Klansman, the leader. But no, yet they see American. Okay, so I did my research. Hey, no, Why are we even enemies? We all got the rocks. Can answer the question? Are you fucking libertarian? No. Why the fuck are you coming? I'm not. What am I doing? How do they protect us? I just walked in the middle. How, what, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Not fucking come to Providence. Stay on the fucking West Coast, you piece of shit. I, 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 your fucking city. I'm coming to your fucking city and cause trouble. What? Is it because I'm Mexican? You want me to go back to Mexico? Is that what it is? You sound like a bigot. By the way, I'm not Mexican. Yeah, turn around. I'm not Mexican anyways. But I am darker than you, so you should check your white privilege. I don't know. Are you racist? Are you racist? Isn't that what you guys do? Run around and call everyone racist? I don't know. You look racist. You look like a Nazi. You guys are building a wall? Build that wall! Build that wall! Build that wall! Build that wall! 10 feet tall! 100 feet tall! Hey, hey, hey! Everybody's coming out to oppose them. And incidentally, I recognize the prop not only the Proud Boys are here, but they brought some folks from the West Coast. Tiny from Portland is here. Oh, that bitch that was in front of me, I didn't give a fuck. She was kicking everybody. I looked down on like, Say what? Bitch. Boom. Short fat bitch. Oh, I did. Yeah. I got some. the other skinny one. Yeah, I got knocked down. You ain't got time to discriminate in that fucking uh situation. You wear a mask, I can tell you a girl. Yeah. Simple as that. And if I can tell you a girl and I still beat you up, I identify as a girl then. <laughs> <laughs> so it's equal. Yeah. Uh, the Huffington Post got a hold of leaked chat logs of Resist Marxism members planning violence ahead of the October 6th rally. Proud boy Sean Huffton said, This motherfucker needs to meet a 7mm from about 500 yards. Alan Groot explained their technique designed to shield them from the law, saying, If any contact is made, that's assault. We need to inflict as much damage as possible in the time we have. Speaking to an insider who did so on the condition of secrecy, he tried to place the blame on the police, comparing their perceived treatment to the white supremacist in Charlottesville. Well, the, the Providence police wanted that whole thing to turn into a shit show so they could shut it down anyways. Go back to, to Charlottesville, right? And if you look at what the mayor and what the governor did, they wanted violence to occur. I mean, they uh, uh, called it an illegal rally before it even began and pushed the two groups out together, right, rather than 
following a protocol, keeping the two sides separate. And and like I said, if, if there's anything I'll give the Boston police, they do a good job of keeping the two sides separate. And now every time I say fuck it, somebody that's gay think I'm, I'm talking to them. I'm talking to them. Well, I don't give a damn. I don't care if you're a fucking tranny. I don't care if you're gay. People like Johnny Benitez, that little faggot. So when Joe Big's buddy walked by Johnny Benitez's phone, he noticed a bunch of gay porn on the phone. He picks up the phone and it's full of gay porn and it's full of like three, Johnny Benitez was actively messaging men on three different gay hookup sites, okay? And all the gay hookup sites were these type of hookup sites where you're, uh, the men are all like these big, buff, hairy, like leather, leather queers or whatever. Johnny Benitez is a closet homosexual, all right? He's a fake. That's, that's, I swear to God, I swear on everything. I put that on my skin, that's, that's real shit. Johnny Benitez is a homosexual. You gotta give credit where credit is due. Every time Chapman has attacked a communist, He's done a great service to America. I will be the first to admit that. However, I was wrong to work with Kyle Chapman. The reason is because for months now, he's not been fighting communists. He's been attacking people on, I mean physically attacking people on the right. You said you green-lighted me, huh? what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You headbutted me, now you've I done all this you. thing. You did. I didn't headbutt you. You, you absolutely my face. did. You I didn't get up on face. your face. Uh, we, we, were, and have we, a talk. Were, we were talking over there. What are you gonna do? You gonna snitch? Am I gonna, you gonna snitch? Snitch you on what? Cops? Snitch on what? Snitch or something? What are you talking about? You're a rat, dude. You're I'm a rat. Bitch. Yeah, you little bitch, boy. Am I? You just touched me again. That's assault again. I just pointed at you. What are you gonna do? I pointed at you. I didn't say I was. <laughs> You're trying to gouge my eyes out. <laughs> Get him off me! Who is it? Are you gouging his eyes out? Huh? Yeah, he's fucking eyes? putting his fingers in my eyes. What are you doing that for? I am writing to withdraw as Master Commander of the Fraternal Order of Old Knights and to withdraw my membership from the organization entirely. Between trying to get laid at every rally getting coked up and taking pills, getting into fights and giving the green light on former members, you are better suited to leading a street gang than a right-wing political organization. Considering the fact that you are more a white nationalist than I am or ever was, the only explanation is that you did it to keep your audience numbers and donation base. Johnny Benitez was one of our people in folk, by the way. There is video of Kyle literally trying to gouge out his fucking eyes. Yeah, this is how we do it, guys. When we show up in mass, we make a visual spectacle. These visual spectacles go viral, they get media attention, and it helps us to promote our cause. Uh, when 20 people show up, it doesn't get the media attention, it doesn't get the spectacle. Uh, when people like myself show up, and then Stuart Rhodes of the Oath Keepers, and, and the other various uh, pro-freedom and American groups, it brings in the media. It brings in masses and numbers, and then it, it gives us a platform to, 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 put, to, to get our message out of, of, of communist awareness, of globalist awareness, and uh, neo-Marxism, and, 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 and to, to start red-pilling people, waking them up. We will not stand by. We are ready to bleed, and if need be, we are ready to die for the defense of this country and our Western civilization. Your take on people showing up here and calling you guys Nazis and everything? Yeah, you know, this is ridiculous. I wish they just knew uh, who we were and what we truly stand for. Because the reason why we're out here is to fight for the right of all people. Why do you think they're calling you Nazis then? Because it sounds like, that doesn't sound very Nazi-like to me. Yeah, so they, uh, uh, this is part of a larger strategy at, uh, by the left, right? And it's to shut down discussion. And so the left has lost the argument. So then they go to white nationalists, then they go to Nazi, right? And they actually make people think that there are legitimate Nazis 
who are going to be marching down the street, which is ridiculous. If you want our guns so you can shut down our Second Amendment, you're going to have to take the bullet first. We have guns, niggas! Whoop they motherfucking ass. And I don't want any problems, you know, I don't want violence with these people, so... Kill them! That's it! Because if we don't kill them, they're going to kill us. I ain't going down. And if you want me to, you want me out, or oh, you got to take all the breath and all the life that's in me. Those of us on the right, at least in my radical camp, want revolution because it's already fucking communist in the federal government, and it has to be taken down anyway. Look at what is going on in this country and tell me it's not already here. You have all monuments down in the south being removed by masked men at night under cover of police sniper fire. You have these Antifa setting fires in the streets, attacking politicians, myself included, attacking protesters like yourselves, rushing police lines. It is a war. We have intelligence operations on their side and on our side. The FBI has counterintelligence operations. If you think it's anything other than war, then you have been lulled to sleep by the media. So it is time to wake up to that fact and prepare yourselves. And a word on preparation, a lot of people here speaking so when you speak of total insurrection, you're speaking of violent insurrection. I am. After a recent speech at the club in New York City, Governor Andrew Cuomo is asking the FBI and state police to investigate alleged Proud Boys instigated violence. Conservative Speaker Gavin McGinnis was hosted by the club on the Upper East Side of Manhattaners. The Gavin Metropolitan Republican Club has been around for almost 100 years and provides a platform for speakers and leaders within the conservative community. Or at the very least, people of the right, let us scum in. You need us foot soldiers. You need us disgusting, rude jerks. Because outside of the swears and the drugs and the violence, and <laughs> quite a list, actually. <laughs> outside of all the things you disagree with, we have a lot in common. What I found interesting was how Gavin McInnes was outraged that he was met with violence, especially because he has been a pretty strong advocate of violence. He said, quote, I want violence, I want punching in the face. I'm disappointed in Trump supporters for not punching enough. Let's go, come on, let's go. Let's go, 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 let's go. Let's go, let's go. Oh, go, go, go. Oh, 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 oh my God, oh my God, no, oh my God, no, no. no. to be a couple of the Proud Boys apparently were caught on camera using pejoratives for homosexuals, things of that nature. Hey, let's go, let's go. So talk to me a little bit about that. And if it did happen and the context is correct, doesn't that enable the left? Doesn't that just play into their narrative? Yeah, it's a terrible thing to say. If I had a time machine, I... Choke a granny. Get your fingers around the windpipe. We need more violence from the Trump people. What's the matter with violence? You need violence. Right, and we're getting physically violent. And if going outside tonight and beating the living out of radicals means I'm a radical, then I'm a revolutionary. The beating incident in New York City became known as the New York City Nine. Proud Boys founder Gavin McInnes continued his buffoonery and promotion of violence, while footage from a second security camera surfaced showing that the Proud Boys charged at Antifa, instigating the street fight. 
As a result, McInnes pretended to step down as the leader. I'm officially disassociating myself from the Proud Boys. Hi, I'm a white nationalist. I hate Jews and I want uh, all blacks to go back to Africa. As a result, Mark Zahadi, Samson Rachapi, and the gang rebranded themselves as the so-called parody of gay pride. As a gay pride flag flies outside City Hall, inside an application for a straight pride parade is working its way through the permitting process. We don't hate anyone. Everybody's invited. No matter what your sexual orientation, we just want to have a fun day. The application was filed by John Hugo, president of the group Super Happy Fun America. Hugo, who was defeated in his run for Congress last fall, says his request to raise a straight pride flag on City Hall Plaza was rejected. An issue, he says, he filed a lawsuit against the city over, and he claims he'll do the same thing if the parade doesn't move forward. Until a few hours ago, until Marty Walsh started spewing his, his hate, we thought it was all set. So I, I'm, we're going to have to... Follow up with City Hall. We had a, a, a lighting ceremony in the South End uh, for Pride, and I said to people, I wouldn't even worry about it. You know, there'll, there'll probably be 10 people at the parade if he has one. You know, actually, I wanted to ask you about the uh, the whole the free speech rally. What did you think about all? Because we've been consumed by it on all sides. What is your viewpoint on my, what happened in view, Boston? Well, actually, it was relatively peaceful, which I like. I'm all for political discourse. I'm, it's perfectly fine to disagree with people. I'm never for violence. I'm, I'm kind of pissed off at what would happen in Berkeley because I, I'm not a fan of Milo Yiannopoulos. But isn't college where you go to hear a difference of opinion? Well, no, why can't people say, I don't want you on my campus? Okay, yeah, what, what's right, the problem exactly. with that? Like, like I, I, I would say, I don't want that guy on my campus. What's the problem with protesting someone? I don't see that, you know. Protesting but not banning free speech. I was, I was there to meet Charlton Heston when I was running for senator about 15 years ago. And. The students I try to know. stop I, I, him I'm from speaking. I'm pretty happy when, when we say no Nazis here. Like, I, I'm sick of being tolerant to these people. Yeah. Like, seriously, especially when they're making advances. I mean, and now they're, yelling... they're, they're, they're going with a new tactic where they're like, oh, we're not really Nazis. We just agree with everything the Nazi thought. <laughs> yeah. We, right. we, just, we just think Nazi stuff's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, all a meme. We're not actually Nazis. Right. right. We're well, just pretending. It's yeah. about frogs. You guys, you liberals are really uh, reactionary. Yeah, right? Um, the alt-center. I don't know. I, I, I like to hear a difference of opinion. Is your group an anti-gay group? 100% not. Absolutely not. Uh, we are a pro-straight organization. We have nothing against those who live non-traditional lifestyles. And we actually have a, um, a gay liaison um, named Chris Bartley. He's working with our LGBT allies. And we also have uh, Milo y Yiannopoulos right. um, as our grand marshal. He's a very famous um, gay conservative speaker, activist. All right, so let's dig in a little bit. I say, hey, do you believe in equality? And of course, they all say, yes, I believe in equality. You believe that rights extend to everyone, no matter who you are, what color you are, what, or your sexual orientation. Of course. Who doesn't believe in that? But it's an internet joke, and we're not sure if it's true or not. So. Samson's friend, who also helped to organize some of the straight pride parades, says, Gay rights aren't libertarian. Read Rothbard. We libertarians are reactionaries, not looking for progress, and we need to repeal gay rights nonsense like anti-discrimination laws, bake the cake, hate crime laws, equal employment laws, the bathroom bill, etc. The stuff they're teaching our kids in school, I don't want to get too graphic because there's a lot of family people here, but it's completely inappropriate. I mean, they're bringing cross-dressers into kindergarten now to do book readings for the kids. And they're, and they're teaching 12-year-old stuff that no 12-year-old should be hearing. I'll just leave it at that. You all know what's going on. <laughs> no, you're trying to make it so I'm a fucking creeper like you. No. I'm, I'm not, I'm not into 14-year-olds. How <laughs> dare you, sir? <laughs> this is Pride Weekend. We think that's just grand. They want to have their parade. Well, we want to have ours. And we never expected the backlash from the far left that we're getting. Uh, we don't understand why the, the sexual orientation of straight would offend people. Most people are straight. We have yeah. our message. Oh, like, don't. It's really true. 
Is, is that really true? You say you've been politically active for decades. So you, is it really true you didn't expect the backlash that you got? Major decision today from the Supreme Court. Gay marriage ruling. Supreme Court finds DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, unconstitutional from the LA Times. We just want to have a celebration of traditional values, which we do believe are under attack. And we actually say we're an oppressed majority. So you can say we're stupid. I'm sorry, I have to disagree with you. There's nothing wrong with celebrating traditional values in our country. But I guess my question is, and I think most people, like, I think you would intellectually say that in the history of this country and everywhere around the world, that the rights of gay people have been far more under attack than straight people. Well, uh, that's, the, that's the wrong narrative. The government is gonna determine who gets what benefits based on their personal relationships? Does that not strike you as horribly offensive? All you gay rights activists out there, of, of which I, I guess technically I am. Do you think of the, in the history of this country, forget the rest of the world, that the rights of gay people have been more under attack than straight people? In earlier history, absolutely. Okay. Nowadays, not so much. Okay. But you know, this is also a landmark loss for those who choose to remain single because it means that they're gonna get fucked over to support a larger group of tax leeches who are gonna get benefits that they don't get because they're single. And for all of us who want to marry animals, we're still just fucked. Do you think that gay people uh, should be allowed to be married? Um, I don't think marriage should be the business of government, period. The Obama administration dug in their fucking heels to say, fuck you, gay people. And although I look like a baby face, um, I actually have um, a, a 15 year old daughter and um, she's she's not only a vegan uh, but uh, but she's got a girlfriend so um, yeah I got a lesbian vegan daughter during World War II homosexuality was forbidden in fact even before the war paragraph 175 in German law prohibited homosexual relations altogether during Hitler's rise to power, he expanded this law to include homosexual kissing, embracing, and fantasies, espousing that gay men were carriers of disease, which weakened the ethnostate. They tore apart the Institute for Sexual Science, raided gay clubs and magazines, and created, quote, pink lists for those they believed to be sexual deviants. Between 1933 and 1945, 100,000 men were arrested for violating the Nazis' laws against homosexuality. It is estimated that about half of those were sent to prison, being forced to sign confessions and jailed without trial. Untold numbers were sent to concentration camps and were punished by sterilization, usually in the form of castration. Adam Kokish, a libertarian candidate for president who was scheduled to speak at the Boston Straight Pride Parade, recently told viewers on his live stream that Holocaust denier Augustus Invictus, who believes in creating ethnostates, and wants a second American Civil War, is a great guy and a friend of Kokish. Espouses, espouses some, some ethno-statist ideals. He's not a racist, I know him personally, he's a great guy. Kokish says straight pride is a joke making fun of gay pride. Making fun of, of gay pride or LGBTQ positive events. Kokish mentioned Invictus because he has previously spoken at events put together by the straight pride organizers. My name is Sean Cotter. I went to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Um, I was there from 1988 till 1993 um, for the majority of that, that time period. Um, I was involved with a student group called the LBGA, which is the Lesbian Bisexual Gay Alliance at UMass. And I remember one year, I don't know if it was 91 or 92, um, that there was a, a straight pride rally and then this straight pride group decided to spring up to protest or to advocate for their their sort of inclusion of uh into pride and and to show that they were proud as well the early 90s late 80s were not were just the beginnings of like queer studies and all that kind of stuff so um aids crisis was still sort of like um huge in everyone's mind the uh quilt the aids quilt was making its rounds at that time as well so there was a lot of awareness and hostility and sort of animosity towards lgbt people um at that moment a lot more i feel like a lot more than now even though it hasn't really gone away i'm not going to lay down and take someone bullying me or abusing me um i'm going to fight back 
Um, and I felt like a lot of my um, cohorts at that time felt the same way. It has nothing's changed. And that's the weird thing about it is nothing has changed. They much talked about and controversial straight pride parade marched through the streets of Boston today. The parade was in response to gay pride events. A few hundred marchers took part. They were far outnumbered, though, by counter protesters who lined the route from Copley Square to City Hall Plaza. <laughs> The so-called straight pride parade kicked off with a large Trump 2020 float. She's literally standing next to a girl who's got a, a swastika on her left arm. She's flashing it as she walks through the crowd. And you tell me they don't stand with Nazis. But many protesters and LGBTQ groups say it's a thinly veiled attempt to spread hate. There's people walking around with Nazi tattoos. It's just unbelievable that our country protects people that are that have Nazi beliefs. I helped organize the anti-straight pride rally in 1989, 90, or 91. I'm not quite sure the exact year at UMass Amherst when they had a straight pride rally at UMass, and the UMass outside the student center was organized by a bunch of UMass students. I wasn't a student at the time, but was active in a group called Queer Nation, and Queer Nation organized. Uh, both in the town of Amherst and Northampton, as well as UMass students. And we uh, held an anti-Straight Pride rally. And the Straight Pride rally at that time was organized by a, a Republican group on the UMass campus. It was headed by a man named Guy Glotus. He was a student. He later became a state representative and uh, sheriff of Worcester County. They did kind of fall into the category of people who wanted to confront uh, maybe liberal groups on campus. I mean, you see what's going on out here. This is really interesting. Obviously, you're again saying that all these people that are here... It's not interesting, it's dangerous. They're publishing uh, pipe bomb manuals. They're here, Tiny Toisi, one of their previous incarnations is Resist Marxism, started a riot down in Providence, and he's putting out these videos saying, I'm going to start the anti faggot movement. Those are his words. Uh, are you going to be part of the violence later? Douchebag pride! Who's a douchebag? You're a douchebag! Douchebag pride! Sharks have 70 genders too! Why can't you accept me for my identity? I That's identify as a there. shark! Milo is a douchebag! 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 Thank you for coming out today to, uh, Hello. to, to Hello. brush you up this fucking douchebag tribe creates. I'm homophobic! I'm homophobic! I might not be. Fuck you! I am anti-gay! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Dude! Fuck you! Fuck out! Go get a job! Half one! Let's go back! Don't give him attention! Fuck you, bitch! Don't give him attention! Let's go back to the group! Fuck you, bitch! Let's go back to our group! They're not worth it! My God, my God. They're coming in and telling our children it's okay to be gay. I have a right to say it's not okay to be gay. All right? It is okay to be straight. Look, either you're for God or you're for the devil. It's one or the other. That's it. There is no middle ground. There is no way of ground. You better choose your side today and get on it. Because I'm telling you, some of the stuff that comes is pure demonic. The only issue the minimal amount of force needed to affect the arrest. That is the law. That is standard number one. Take the police, riot, bullshit, be aware of it. Thank you. The minimal use of force to affect your objective. Fuck you! 
Hey, 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 hey! You don't have to hurt them! Fucking monsters! Get off his head! Get off his head! Get off his head! So what's the next step guys? Did you give an order to disperse or are you just chilling out? You gonna kettle us in? What's just uh, given? If you give an order, actually people are much quicker to move, I think. They're here for redress of their grievances. You are the closest thing that they have to a representative of the government. Now, they can't talk to Donald Trump. They can't talk to Nancy Pelosi. It's you guys, and I know you don't even want to be here. You want to go home to your families. Oh, shit. Shit. They're coming, they're coming. Stop it! Hey, what are you doing, buddy? What for? What for? Hey, Berman! 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 Rod! Rod Weber! Let him go! Please let that man go! Cool. Gentle, be gentle with this man. No paying compliance is necessary. He is not resisting. The man is not resisting. My leg! My fucking leg! You hurt his leg! God damn it! Fucking god damn it! I support peaceful protest. I don't condone violence in any form. We need an independent investigation and we need body cameras. Tuesday in court, prosecutors pushed to drop the charges for seven defendants. Motions denied. The judge denied the motion. Video from two of them shows the arrest of Rod Weber. Weber was charged with assaulting a police officer, but his and other videos don't show any violence. Today, prosecutors moved to dismiss his charges, but the judge had him arrested in the hallway instead. Church was representing one of the three dozen counter demonstrators arrested at this weekend's so called Straight Pride Parade. All I was trying to do was to read the law to the court, and I was summarily arrested. We couldn't be happier at the moment with the judge that's on the bench. What the judge has done today is decide to arrest a lawyer based on his own political opinion. D.A. Rollins jumped into the fray with both feet, calling Judge Sinat's actions unprecedented and outrageous, and his refusal to drop the charges as recommended by her office as an unconstitutional abuse of his power. I'm not going to say if I was wrong, I'm just going to say I apologize. An apology and a guilty plea today from Tusitala Toesi. A felony assault charge against Toesi was dropped today in exchange for a misdemeanor. Toesi given two years probation, 80 community service hours, and having to pay restitution. Augustus Invictus, he is here with Jeff Zuski of the Public Defender's Office. The charges before you are domestic violence, high and aggravated nature, possession of a weapon during commission of violent crime, kid and kidnapping. He confronted her by, uh, with a pistol or a gun. I would request that bond be denied in this situation. What has been presented to the court today that he is a potential danger to the community. Denied his bond. 